Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another Learning Go video. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing concurrency patterns, specifically about the error group package. So the error group package is not the part of the standard library. It's a third party package that you need to import. But it thankfully is actually something that is supported by the Go team. It's part of the colon.org slash x slash sync package group. It's a subgroup called error group. And it includes a way to synchronize uh, propagate errors and uh, cancel using the context uh, type that I covered previously in, in obviously in previous episodes. So if you haven't seen those videos, I will be leaving the link in the description. This video in particular, because we are discussing more specifically about concurrency patterns, I'm going to be uh, using the foundation that we discussed previously in the introduction to concurrency patterns which again i will be leaving the two links to those two videos in the description if you haven't seen those before this one now the cool thing about this one is it works for a group of goroutines working on a common task and this is something that it may be redundant, but it's happily, it's really common. And I want to show you the actual code, but because this is more hands-on than the previous episode. So let's jump into the code to show you how I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say, and how this works in real life. So as usual, the link to this code will be also in the description. Feel free to clone the repo, play with it, and you, you know, follow along if you want to. So I have this example that is going to be using some of the uh, code that I used previously when I was discussing the fun in, fun out, patterns and specifically specifically what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be reading three uh, csv files that i have right here just some random uh, files that happen to be just containing random content the actual content doesn't matter i just want to show you a way to um, have uh, something that we're go going to be pulling data from which in this case will be reading a file that happens to be returning a channel and then use that as part of the example that i want to show you using the error group package. The first thing I want to show you is how we are going to be reading this file. And as you may imagine, I'm going to be using the CSV package that is part of the standard library. And it's just doing your usual CSV read kind of thing. It's returning a channel, like I was saying. And this channel will be used in the example that I have above. Uh, I want to show you two different ways to do it, uh, specifically to show you the difference between these two things. One of them will be using a package that is included in the standard library called sync. And the other one will be using the error group package that is not part of the standard library. Now the sync package example will be using a type called wait group. And the way it works is a way to define a group of goroutines and indicate how many of those go routines are working together. It's sort of like the same idea, but there is a big difference. The way it works with the weight group is that you need to specify a sort of like the length of the amount of go routines that you're going to be launching. And in the example that I have here is for each file that I'm reading, I'm adding a value to the weight group. And what it indicates is that in order for that weight group to be completed, all of those where go routines have to be completed and there is this wait uh, method right here that indicates wait until all the go routines that I launched before that are indicated by the amount of calls to the add method that is right here uh, when all of those reach zero it's time when we need to complete the whole process and it's I believe it's pretty straightforward uh, it launches a go routine I'm adding a uh, value to the wait group <clears throat> when i'm finished i just call uh, done using a defer and it completes the uh, reading all the files so if i run this this uh, implementation you will notice that it's going to be doing it's going to be doing what we were just describing nothing spectacular but if i go and change and use the error group i want to show you specifically how the error group is implemented because a few things change and the cool thing about this uh, package is that instead of defining concrete values or rather defining the length of how many go routines are supposed to be completed by the end of the whole common task or the whole process uh, we are going to be using the value that is being returned by the result in the function that is being run as the go routine so for example the error group has two important methods one will be using the go uh, method and the other one will be similar to the wait group using a call to wait uh, to the wait method. The biggest difference is that when you're calling uh, the go method, you are, need to specify a function that is going to be running as a go routine that happens to be returning an error, 
when something fails or nil when it, is, it finishes. And the the way this works for weight is that when any of those go routines uh, returns a non nil error, it will trigger that error across the board of all the other go routines, and therefore stopping all the go routines that I started with the same. Way, uh, error group and this is the cool thing that i like and is, this is the biggest difference with compared to the weight groups is that we have a weight again if you remember what i was saying in the beginning you can propagate uh, uh, context details or rather propagate errors using the context package that is part of this specific uh, uh, weight group uh, error no, i'm sorry no weight group error group uh, package so if i run this again using the error group it will give you, you know, sort of the same result. And I want to show you another example that is going to give you a better idea why I really like this package in particular. And let's jump into the another example. So this example is also included in the link that I'm leaving in the description. The biggest difference with this one is compared to the previous one is that here I'm showing you why this is so cool when you're using the context package together with the error group package. If you remember context, among all so many things it does context propagation uh, cancellation deadlines it passes down your key value of a key value values uh, in the context but the important bit about the error group is that we can pass down if we define a context we can pass down that information to the go routines that happen to be implementing those values so for example right here i have a context using the your regular context background and i have a similar implementation using the error group that i have on the right side and the way it works compared to the previous one is that instead of uh, running each one of those values in a go routine i'm actually using a select the select keyword for determining if one of the other go routines that are part of the same common task fail already and this is the most powerful thing about using compared to using for example weight groups or maybe running your own using channels and go routines is that when you're using a package like error group if you're using context as the main way to propagate uh, signals between the different go routines you can determine if one of those failed you can stop the one that you're running at the moment and let me show you an example right here i have this code if i run it it will run as usual, nothing will be uh, spectacular of our, out of the ordinary, everything is working. But I want to call out one important thing. The read uh, method or function rather, that I have right here now is sleeping intentionally one millisecond. And the whole idea of this is that I'm trying to demonstrate maybe there is a delay, maybe there is a, um, a timeout happening when you're trying to maybe invoke some remote re requests from remote uh, microservices or whatever, and you're trying to consolidate all those values using error group. This is something similar to what you were trying to do, and perhaps you want to define a timeout and say, hey, all of these tasks that I'm trying to do should take at least, I don't know, 100 milliseconds. If anything takes longer than that, I will be cancel everything and, and do something with the values that I have. And that depends on the business logic that you have. But if we go back to the way we're calling or instantiating the error group, is that I'm saying, hey, I have a context right here, it's the background. If if I want to say, I want to enforce it, this to something ridiculous to like one millisecond, so everything should be completed in one millisecond. If I run this again, what is going to happen is that I'm going to be, some of them will be processed, like uh, this call right here, and then I'm going to be checking, I receive a context deadline error, which was triggered by the with timeout method that is part of the function that is part of the context package and similarly the other two go routines receive the same error now if you remember when i was discussing select uh, you can have a way to um, sort of like check if the value is available for different channels when you're running a go routine i'm doing something similar and i covered it again the link will be leave i uh, will be we leave in the link in the description for the context package uh, video and i'm doing basically that i'm checking if the context package is completed it means that maybe one of the other go routines that are part of the same task is already completed either it failed or maybe for some other reason it just finished so i can indicate that in my select and i can exit from the processing that i'm receiving and similarly if you remember the way it was implemented implemented before i was i was just looping through the channel in this case i'm using the case statement to loop or rather 
to check if the context was completed or I still have a value from the channel that I'm receiving. And again, if you receive, this is sort of similar to what I covered in the context package, uh, context package video as well. So again, this is super cool. I really like the error group a lot because it allows you to define really complex rules when dealing with remote requests specifically when you are trying to deal with something that indicate or requires a timeout and maybe you need to call different microservices and you have a predefined amount of time to complete that task you can indicate easily using this package you can definitely use the use weight groups and channels and do something like that but this is simplifies a lot of the things now let's jump into the conclusions and i will talk to you in a moment so this is the error group package. Like I said, it's a fantastic way to handle parallel requests with a deadline. And specifically, I think that that's the best use case. It's super simple to propagate messages or cancellation details across multiple goroutines using the context package. If you combine what you what we learned before using select and the logic that we have with the deadlines that are included in the context type in the context package, you can use all that logic to create really complex and really powerful code and application using Go and this third party package that is called error group. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time. Stay, fit, stay safe and I will talk to you in the next video. Take care. See you.